Hi everybody, it is uh, Sunday the 30th of October. Uh, tomorrow's Halloween. Um, I'm, the glue is just starting to dry here. I'm decided I'm going to go as either maybe somebody out of Lord of the Rings, maybe perhaps, or maybe up, it could be somebody like in the Oak Ridge Boys, um, or maybe uh, ZZ Top. We'll see. Um, I'll figure that out uh, when I go out to trick or treat. But as of right now, I'm just waiting for the, uh, the beard to dry so that uh, it won't blow off in the wind. Um, pretty much finished with the room. I'm really, uh, I'm really pleased. I've got a little touch-up work to do in there. Um, but I moved furniture in and uh, a room that was just chaotic and a total mess for decades. It's been one of those rooms you open the door and throw crap in and slam the door shut. It's like a episode of Hoarders. All of a sudden now it's a viable, really nice looking room. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with myself. I'm, um, so that's that. Um, I just uh, got some things I'm taking care of today and uh, getting ready Tuesday. Uh, Denny Tedesco and I are uh, driving down to San Diego for the San Diego Film Festival. And I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, we'll be starting rehearsals soon with the band. Um, there's more festivals coming up, and then especially the one in New York, the documentary festival, is really a big deal. And that's the 15th and 16th of November. And I'm really excited about that. The whole band will be there for the 15th for sure, and maybe the 16th. I don't know what everybody else's plans are, but I plan on being there on the 16th, and then I'll it's that's a afternoon um, showing and Q&A and then I'm going to head straight to the airport and fly home that evening so because um, I've got something I have to do on the 17th here um, so I was thinking about music today and uh, there's somebody who really I was total fanboy the first time I worked with him um, because his career meant so much to the formation of my career and I've done two um, videos in the past about him, but I thought I'd do another, at least one more today. Maybe I'll do today and tomorrow. Uh, but that's the great Bill Medley. Uh, when I, I, the first time I met him, I was really kind of almost didn't know what to say because when I was learning to play bass, uh, I, one of my favorite bands ever was the Righteous Brothers. Bill Medley and Bobby Hatfield were a combination that other than like a, a few groups like Sam and Dave and the Everly Brothers, there's very few groups that have come along that just have that thing, that thing that happens when they sing together. And I was such a fan of them, and especially the Righteous Brothers right now, which is their first album, because everybody thinks about You've Lost That Love and Feeling, which is, I think, the most played song ever. I mean, ever. It's Barry Mann and Cynthia Weil. And I, I told stories about all this stuff on the uh, two previous videos. But I remember Bill telling me that when they recorded it, apparently You've Lost It, Love and Feeling was a real kind of bubblegum tune. It was a real up-tempo, like, you never close your eyes anymore when I kiss. Well, it just wasn't happening when they were in the studio. And they recorded with the Wrecking Crew on that. So they kept slowing it down until it finally got to, you never close. And it became this iconic song, but Barry uh, and Cynthia were in New York and they were cutting it in LA. So they contacted them by phone and wanted to play it for them over the phone. And apparently when they were playing it to them, Barry kept yelling, it's on the wrong speed, because <laughs> he had no idea that they had slowed it down. But the first time I met Bill, I was kind of like, I turned into Ralph Cramden where I was kind of going, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, and he's the nicest cat in the world, just the nicest guy. So it was really fun. I mean, he calls me on a regular basis, and I call him, and it's hey, bro Brother Lee, it's Brother Bill. You know, and I just go, yes, God damn it, son. <laughs> uh, it still freaks me out. There's a few artists that have had that impact on me, and Bill is certainly one of them. Um, but we I went in the studio back in 2004, and we did an album that's called um, Your Heart to Mine, dedicated to the blues. Now, the thing that's really pissing me off is I think in, I, I searched everywhere. And, you know, if anybody can help me out on this, I would much appreciate it. Um, but I can't find hardly any credits for this. Jim Cox played keyboards and um, did the arrangements on this. The great, great Jim Cox. 
Um, Steve Tyrell and and Bill produced the album. But as far as the other players, I can't remember if maybe Russ was playing drums or... Um, Carl, I mean, I, I just don't know. And it's just driving me crazy, but I've gone to all music, I've gone to Discog, I've gone to all of them, and all of them kind of come up with the same couple of names, but there isn't any real list of all the players that were involved in this. It wasn't a huge amount. And the thing that um, it, to me is so important on these videos is giving credit to all of the people involved, engineers, second engineers, arrangers, musicians, producers, um, everybody, because this isn't, you know, it's like you go see a movie and the movie could have two characters in it. And then the credits start running and there's tons of people involved in making these things. And it's the same with making a record, uh, even if it's just the artist and maybe even a small band, like maybe four pieces with them. There's still a lot of people involved in the process. Um, who, those who did mastering, I mean, it's just, it's really quite astounding how much work goes into making a record. People that don't know, you know, the process don't really realize how much it goes on. So if anybody can come up with any of the information about this, again, it is Your Heart to Mine from 2004, dedicated to the blues. So I'm going to play a couple of songs from this uh, that I just dig. And Bill's voice is so iconic. He's another one of those guys that's like Willie Nelson and and Dolly Parton and Joe Cocker and um, all, all these people that a couple of notes and you know who it is. And Bill's just got that timber in his voice. And uh, whenever he calls me, I pick up the phone and leaves Brother Bill. And I just go, yes. So it's still kind of, um, I'm still uber fanboy with Bill. He really... Uh, means the world to me. He's one really incredible guy. And I remember when Bobby Hadfield passed away and you kind of wonder, What's, what is he going to do at this point? And I think he was doing some shows where they had Bobby on video and he was doing it. And then I think uh, a few years ago, sorry, I'm itching here. Um, a few years ago, he, he brought in a new partner because Bill's still, man, singing his ass off and, and wants to work. And that's really the tragedy of losing half of a duo is what do you do at that point? Do you just pack it in or do you continue? I mean, it's like looking at all the bands like Zeppelin and The Who and all these groups that have lost members, um, but they're still out touring. And uh, at a certain point, maybe it's it's to the point where you're going to time to pack it in. There's like the only thing left is a, is a, a coat <laughs> from the original band. But uh, but Bill really wanted to keep on working, so um, so he's still out there, and it's I've, I think he's just a, a real treasure. So let me do this. Uh, this song is let me see if there's anything on this one. Maybe maybe I'll get lucky. Um, no, God, I wish I. This is called "This Will Be the Last Time." So here we go. Let's listen to some great Bill Medley uh, from this album. Yeah, hold on. Oh, come on. Oh, I forgot to turn the speaker on. <laughs> the genius that I am. I really need like one of those airline, like a checkoff list that, that the pilots do, you know, because I'm sitting here going, what's wrong? I listened to this earlier and then realized that I looked over and the speaker's off. So here we go. This will be the last time. Great Jim Cox. This will be the last time mm. that I ever have to This will be the last time, baby, that I ever have the blues. Mm. You've taken everything I've got, and I've got nothing, nothing left to lose.
this will be the last time that you ever see me cry. Don't you ever, ever see me cry Like the well without no water cut this at Steve Tyrell at that time had a studio down on Sunset. Uh, he and Bob Mann, I believe, were, were partners in it. Bob, great Bob Mann who played with James Taylor during the 80s. 
and uh, he's based, I think he's Canadian, suddenly recalling, but he did a lot of work out of New York, but Bob's a fabulous arranger. He did a lot of stuff with Linda Ronstadt and stuff, and we did a lot of projects at that studio. We did B.J. Thomas, that's where we did the Andy Griffith albums, that's where we did the, um, oh God, um, Brady, very Brady movies, which is what launched um, Steve's completely new career at that point. He was a producer. And uh, when we did like the uh, demo, I believe, for, for one of the songs in, in that, um, Steve sang it and then we sent it off and the director said, no, you've got to do it. <laughs> and all of a sudden he had an entire new career doing the Great American Songbook and, and all of that stuff. He did, we did Jamie Walter's album uh, from the Heights all kinds of stuff, but, you know, being in the studio and Bill's in there singing live vocals with us, you know, there's nothing more inspiring than having the artist in the studio with you and they're, they're putting out and they're inspiring you to give your best at that point too. So it was great. So let me, here's one called Pledging My Love. Let me see if this has any info on it. Nope. That's such a drag. Because there's so many great, there's the arrangements on that last one, the sax, the guitar. I'd love to know who the hell all that are. Because it's 2004, I, mean, I, I hate to say, but I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I just remember Bill. So here we go. Pledging my love. Forever, my darling, my love will be true. Always and forever I'll love just you Hand still hurts Just promise me, darling Your love in return Break the spot in my soul, dear Forever burn my heart said your command, dear, to keep love and to hold. Making you happy is my desire, dear. Keeping you is my goal. I'll forever love you the rest of my days. I'll never part from you. And your loving ways mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's enough for me Just to sit there and go, mm -hmm. it's enough for me. You know, I don't need lyrics. I don't need him to dig in. It's just, it's, I love it. Um, one more here, and then I'm going to get running here. I'll finish off tomorrow, I think, with Bill. I, 
I just really like him so much. I, I, I could listen to him all day long. So this one is called You're the One. I'll check again, see if there's any inf inf no, no information. It really drives me crazy. It's a short trip. So um, here we go. Finish him up tomorrow. I could use two days of Bill Medley. So, uh, one thing I'm really proud of is we just found out today our album, uh, our single, uh, "Toughest Girl in Town," came out Friday, and uh, today Spotify's top 100 came out, and we've already entered the top 100. I think we were at either 94 or 95, which is really amazing for like a day and a half or two days into it. So, um, and go play it. Toughest Girl in Town, The Immediate Family. Um, go ahead and, and put likes on, do whatever you can. I mean, we are, we are in this for the long run, so please uh, help us, help us out. So um, however that works, go ahead and uh, the video for it, hopefully I'll be out next week, which is really, really good. 
um, really excited how quickly this one came together. And, uh, and it's very poignant and timely. And uh, so it's really cool. So I'm going to get running. i got lots of things I still have yet to do today, and I'm sure you do too. So have a great rest of your weekend. And tomorrow, if anybody um, is going to be out doing any trick-or-treating with little kids or anything, be very, very careful. There's always, like, problems on nights like that. I mean, it's bad enough when you hear about, you know, people putting stuff in candy and all that. Because I remember as a little kid, half the people I would collect, you know, trick-or-treats from were, you know, people in the neighborhood and they were baking stuff. And there was never that question. There might be a razor blade or something. So be really careful with the kids and be really careful when you're out on the streets with them. Because a lot of people are out that drive don't pay any attention. You know, a little kid coming up, running between a couple of cars could be absolutely horrible. So uh, have fun for for trick-or-treating, but be very cautious and careful and make it a really special evening for the kids. I loved it. God, I would always love it when um, somebody would come to the door and you'd open it and there would be like a baby dressed as a bumblebee, you know, and you just want to start crying. It's so adorable and so sweet. So I, I look forward to this. So take good care. I will see you all tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.